Hello and welcome to the first episode of Impact Etching University. I'm Andre, Director of Economical Solutions, or as we are known on internet, impactetching.com. For the last 10 years, we've been offering unique diamond engraving machines to customers in the US and Canada and installed hundreds of them. We are the best of breed machine and we still support our customers that bought our equipment 10 years ago. I wanted to start this video to educate you on different aspects of using our machines, in particular the image editing processing aspect. Each of the videos will be no longer than 15 minutes and hopefully it will provide a lot of value to you. The first uh, topic I wanted to cover is images are uh, image formats. What kind of image formats are there? Uh, which ones are better than the other and what is the difference? So if you look at the, as the kind of landscape of all the image formats, in general you can separate them into two, maybe three categories. So let's say there's uh, raster images, vector images, and then there is some proprietary formats which are re really specific to a particular program, uh, like for example Photoshop format, which can contain both raster as well as vector images. So uh, at, at its core the question is, what is the difference between raster and vector? Raster is the format which stores uh, your image as collection of pixels. Uh, basically each small tiny piece of your image is stored separately as a combination of intensity, color, and a lot of other attributes. Uh, the typical example of raster image is the photograph in your digital camera. Well, pretty much the majority of images you see on the internet are raster. Uh, vector is a format where image is represented as a combination of curves. Uh, they would not, like if, if it's a circle, uh, uh, it would not be represented as a combination of dark pixels uh, arranged in a certain way. Uh, what uh, vector uh, images typically store, they store like a center of circle, the diameter, and then the program as it processes that format will draw that, uh, that primitive, they call primitives, uh, based on the geometric characteristics. It's like a little bit trivialized explanation of how vector images work, but uh, there's a world of difference between vector and pixel as you can exp as you can see. Um, I suspect that the programs that you use in uh, cutting uh, and preparing the stencils and cutting the stencils like MonoCAD, I suspect that those programs are actually vector programs. Are, I'd be surprised if that's not the case. Uh, what is the difference between vector and, uh, and raster? Obviously uh, raster is uh, when you scale it, it can lead to reduction of quality. I mean you zoom in on the image you start seeing small like smaller pixels. Vector images are typically infinitely scalable, both up and down without, without losing the quality or resolution per se. Um, and I guess obviously <laughs> one thing for us to understand is that our engraving machines of all kinds pretty much only work with raster images. So whatever uh, vector format you used to work with in, our, in other fields of your business like stencil cutting, for example, uh, or like, I don't know, some, some publishing uh, also uses a vector, they will not be applicable to raster images used in engraving. Moreover, converting between those two worlds of raster and vector is typically not a trivial thing. Because, for example, raster images are typically half-tone whereas vector images quite often are black and white, which is like your typical stencil stencil kind of artwork, right? Artwork that you use for stencils is basically a line drawing and the outline of whatever needs to be cut without halftones, whereas the photograph contains the halftones and it gives the image that you're looking at the feeling of depth, the feeling of, be of it being 3D. Uh, so let's now put aside the vector format as we've established it's not really something that you're going to use for engraving of any kind. And let's take a look at the raster formats. So of raster formats, there's many. There's uh, probably the one you've heard about most is JPEG. Then there's obviously BMP, one of the oldest formats in existence. Then there's uh, TIFF, GIF, like slightly less popular. 
Um, but out of those two, there's again a significant difference uh, that I would like to illustrate by looking at BMP and JPEG. The difference is that JPEG is a so-called lossy format. Lossy as in L-O-S-S-Y. Uh, that could potentially be the word uh, you've never heard before, but it's used quite often uh, amongst uh, graphic designers. Lossy means that the format loses the information. So the reason JPEG files, size-wise, are so small is because they compress the image at the expense of losing some detail. Really, those lossy formats like JPEG or the corresponding video formats that are used everywhere nowadays is the reason and the explanation why we can now go and stream the video real time and it will kind of work with today's technology. Because those, those images and video frames get compressed with lossy formats. Uh, so whenever you work with JPEG, you should be very careful not to uh, deteriorate the quality of image by compressing it too much. Usually when you work with JPEG, you actually have control of how much the um, image will be compressed and how much of quality will be sacrificed to achieve the smaller size. Um, I'm going to demonstrate to you a couple of examples now on my computer as to the, uh, about the difference uh, between JPEG, and, uh, which is lossy format, and BMP, which is a non-lossy format. So, um, again, JPEG, uh, before we go there, I just wanted to explain one more important aspect. JPEG uh, compresses the image at the expense of quality, and usually that reduction in quality is not visible to you. Uh, BMP doesn't compress images at all, usually. Then there are some other formats which do compress images, but not in a lossy way, without losing the quality. And one of the formats uh, to illustrate that, I think, is TIFF. TIFF is a very complex format, but typically it compresses the images without loss of quality. And it's a very good format to send the images back and forth in a, highly, in a high resolution without losing, the, uh, without losing the quality of original image. Okay, let me demonstrate uh, on my computer right now uh, very Okay, so let's play a little bit with those image formats. This is just a random photo of the dog that I found on the internet. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save this image first as, uh, as BMP format. And I'm going to call it, obviously, dog.bmp. So that is the first thing. Then I'm going to go and save this image. Remember, as we've discussed now, BMP is a non-lossy format. If you save something in BMP format, it will definitely preserve the image. It will not try to compress it in any way, but as a result, the file will be pretty big. Another format that we can use is the format that compresses the image without losing its quality. And a good example is TIFF. So let me save as doc tiff. And then I'm going to do two experiments. I'm going to save this format as JPEG and advanced raster editors give you typically control over the compression ratio of JPEG. Remember how I said JPEG is a lossy format? When you save images as JPEG, you can actually control the degree of compression. You can control to which degree the quality of image gets sacrificed to achieve smaller size. And usually you don't see it right away, but if you click on options, there is a parameter called compression factor. So I'm gonna save this image once with compression factor of 10. I'm gonna call dog compression factor, okay. Low compression, dog low compression. And then I'm going to save the same file with high compression factor, just so that you can see the difference. And to exaggerate it a little bit, I'm going to actually jack up the compression ratio to 90. I know it's a little bit of an artificial example, but I would like to be able to show you the difference. Uh, and high compression, okay? So now that we did this, I'm gonna open this directory 
and uh, let's take a look at those files. So the BMP file is 2.8 megabyte in size. The TIFF file is 1.7, which is roughly, well, it's not almost a half, but it's close, it's, it's significantly smaller, let me put it this way. The dog with low compression, when you open this image, it looks okay. It, you wouldn't be able to see significant deterioration in quality. That is the JPEG format, but because it's JPEG and because it really compresses your image highly, it is only 161 kilobyte. It's more than 10 times smaller than Dog BMP. The file is smaller, the resolution is not. Pixel-wise, it's still the same file. What happened with JPEG is it substitutes certain areas of image for like monotone, like for those pixels. I mean, basically it's for those areas where which are the same color. So now this is the highly compressed image and you will see these things which you're probably familiar with and shown uh, seen before on the internet. Uh, and this small areas of image, which look like monochrome, well, not monochrome, but uniform pixel, co the, the areas of pixels with uniform color, they're called JPEG compression artifacts, right? And that's how you know uh, that image is compressed and it kind of illustrates how JPEG works. It substitutes the area of the picture, of the picture which have kind of similar color with the area of the same color. And then it just basically codes that area as coordinates and flat fills it with the same color. And as you can see, right, the JPEG format significantly deteriorates the quality, right? Whereas in the original image, you could clearly, for example, see the eyes. In here, it's uh, not so good. From afar, it kind of almost the same, but you start zooming in, not good. And uh, that's why you should use the JPEG format very carefully because it loses the quality. I hope this illustration is really helpful in understanding that. Okay, so to summarize what we've just learned is um, JPEG is a completely okay format. There's nothing wrong with using it. Um, but when you use it, be aware of the fact that it's a lossy format. If you have control of compression ratio, keep it low. When in doubt, it's completely okay to use BMP. Granted, your images will be significantly bigger size-wise, but uh, the storage is cheap nowadays, and usually it's not a problem to uh, store the image in BMP format. And uh, God forbid to store images in other kind of hybrid formats such as PDF. PDF in itself is not really an image format, it's a publishing format. So in theory, a lot of scanners will actually allow you to scan the photograph and output it in PDF but it will be badly compressed image with quite significantly deteriorated quality and PDF uh, is really not a good format to use for image processing for engraving machines. I hope you found it uh, useful. Uh, if you do, please go and friend us on Facebook and uh, follow up on YouTube. Both in Facebook and YouTube you need to search for impact etching it's like facebook.com slash impact etching written together or youtube.com slash impact etching friend us on facebook like the page and then you will be notified of all the updates whenever the next episode becomes available and the next episode by the way is about scanning or obtaining the images properly it might seem very trivial again but it's not um, you'll be surprised what you learn and uh, what is the best hardware to actually scan the images if they come to you in paper form. That's it. Thank you very much. Have a nice week.